Thank you. When I was younger, before in my early days in high school, I was much smaller than the other kids. I got bullied a lot. That's probably why I was so self-conscious and socially awkward most of my life. My first bullies were my mother and my older brother. They would get together and they would verbally abuse me. They, th they said it was teasing, but for those you look up to, those you depend on, it hurts worse. I was smaller than the other kids, socially awkward, and I had a big mouth. That did not help my bullying at all. I would find other bullies that used to leave me alone, and I would go to them for protection. That's when I started to keep to myself. And for a couple of years, things got a little better. In 1975, I entered high school as a big, bad freshman, weighing in at about 38 kilograms. And I joined the football team. I was already a wrestler. The football coach wanted us to wear neckties on game days, and I never wore a tie. I never owned a tie. So I had my mother take me to the store to buy one. We got to the store and I saw these ties, the solid colored ones, the uh, plaid ones, the striped ones, the ones I thought were dad ties, very boring. And then I looked, there it was, the holy grail of ties. It was a necktie with the Jaws movie logo on it, with the one where the sharks rising to the surface to attack the swimmer. And that's the tie I wanted. That's the tie I was going to buy. And that's the tie I was going to wear the next day in school. So I asked my mother to buy it. She said no. She said it's probably going to bring some undue attention towards you. I was a freshman in high school. I was a football player. Attention is what I'm after here. So I begged and I pleaded. And I begged and I pleaded. I begged and I pleaded. And she finally relented and bought it. Next day... I got up, put the tie on, and I was off the classes. Unfortunately, my mother was right. It seemed like that whole day, everybody, even the teachers, made fun of me. It went on all day, all day. Even the teachers, that's what really hurt. My friends told me, take the tie off. Deal with the consequences from the coach for not wearing it. Forget the harassment. And I thought about it, but I held steadfast. It was my tie. I'm wearing it all day, despite the bullying. Later that year, during wrestling season, people started to leave me alone. I had bigger wrestlers looking out for me. I was still smaller than the 44 kilogram weight class, but they were there for me. I was able to wrestle my first varsity match last meet of the season. I pinned my opponent in the first period. I won. I won. Made the local papers. That's when things started to change. I became a junior in high school. I grew in size, I was a better wrestler. I had my driver's license. I was one of the cool kids. I started befriending people that were more like me. People thought like me, but they weren't so self-conscious. I wanted to stop any more bullying that would come my way the rest of my school year. So our little group grew in size. We were athletes. We would party together. We'd go to classes together. We'd ditch classes together. We would drink together. The little kids looked up to us, and the other students just tolerated us. They didn't even care. But little by little, we started doing the intimidating. We would intimidate everybody we saw, even the kids that looked up to us. Nobody was safe. If you were different from us, you were at our mercy. If you were an athlete, if you're socially, if you just weren't part of the groups, we were coming after you. I was now the bully. After high school, 
I continued to verbally abuse people who I felt deserved it because that's what I wanted to do. It was something I learned from my mother and my brother. Find something that bothers people and then hammer them with it. There is no formula. I was judge, jury, and executioner. Later on, I became an English teacher at the school I attended. Now I had demons on both sides, being bully and being the bully. I started to face my past by wearing neckties that would have gotten me bullied when I was in high school. Cartoon characters, bright ties, colorful ties, ties that commanded attention. This is where I wanted to be, and this is how I wanted to do it. My first couple years teaching, I reverted back to my bullying ways, bullying the students. Things were different. I was an adult. They were a kid, and I'm bullying them. How dare I? So I did some soul searching because I had kids of my own. Would I want an adult treating them like that? I don't think so. It's time to figure these kids out. The ones you can't identify with. Talk to them. Find out what they're all about. There was a woman that I knew with, who had a classroom across the hall from me. And she dealt with the kids that were very social and very bad problems. They were in wheelchairs. They couldn't talk. They wouldn't talk. They couldn't be in the classroom with other kids. I'd go in there daily. I would talk to these kids. I'd read to them. I'd work with them. And the smiles on their faces when you came to that room. For them, you came for them. And when I left, I knew they were thanking me for being there. Some of the kids formed an LGBTQ group and they asked me to be part of it, but I'm a straight guy. How could I be an asset? And they said, with my background, the people I know, the place I've traveled, I'd be a great addition to their group. And I could see an unbiased viewpoint for them. And I was happy to help. Being the wrestling coach and being part of all the extracurricular activities, I started seeing these kids on a daily basis, some more than once a day. Tried to figure out why I did what I did. I would talk to them, I would listen to them. And you know what? They're human beings with feelings. They care just like everybody else. They needed help. And I was going to help them. From now on, everywhere I was in that school, they had a safe place to go. If anybody came up to them to bully them, I put a quick and immediate stop to it. I was their teacher, their counselor, their mentor, and their protector. Thank you.